Hello everybody, my name is Zukmar and this is Hot Mode. and today on Hot Mode, we are coming to you with your New York Fashion Week roast and review for the spring 2024 season. Listen, for each of our fashion show reviews for the spring 2024 season, there will be an accompanying celebrity aspect to it because listen, it's a lot to cover all these things all at once. So we're starting off with New York. If you haven't seen the New York Fashion Week reviews, it's up there. And there were a lot of celebrities that showed up for New York Fashion Week, so we're gonna get into their outfits as well. First up, we have Anita who is wearing Michael Kors. Now she is wearing, I believe, either a crop top and skirt or a dress with a waist cutout in a black knit. And then she has a tailored coat over top. She's also wearing this oversized belt, which we saw last season for Michael Kors. I actually really like it. I think it's a cool belt. I think it's fun. I think it's different. I think it's exciting. I like the way that it sort of hangs on the body rather than sort of constricting the body. And then we have croc embossed leather boots and a matching handbag. And honestly, I think all in all, it's cool. I'm not saying that it's a radical experience in terms of clothing, experimentation, and design, but do I think that for Michael Kors, it is cool and chic and elevated, simple commercial basics? Yeah, and I think that that's okay. I think that's what Michael Kors should be doing. I think that they should make things that are always going to be commercial because that's kind of the brand ethos. But at the same time, make them cool, make them desirable. I would wear the jacket. I want the belt. Like there's elements of it that somebody would say, oh, it's Michael Kors. And they wouldn't feel like, oh, it's Michael Kors. It's, oh, it's Michael Kors. And I think that's important. So Nita, I think looks good. Next up we have Ayo Edebury and she is wearing Proenza Schooler. Now this is a very simple sort of look from Proenza. It's a black suit, black blazer, black pant. And then we have a white button down shirt, but it's actually been sort of unbuttoned around the stomach area. So it creates a styling layered effect. And we have what I presume is like a backless sort of boot mule situation going on on the bottom. Proenza is a brand that's a little bit more, I don't wanna say commercial, but it is a little bit more commercial. The most recent season that we saw from Proenza is also very, very commercial. I understand this. Again, I think that there's an element of it that it's a brand, it wants to sell clothes, that makes sense. I do think that when we look at it against the Anita look, there's a little bit less of excitement, dressed up basics element of it. It feels a little bit more black suit and white shirt, and there's nothing that really reads Proenza from it in that regard. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's amazing. I think it's there. And I think that they at least tried to style it, and I think that's good. But I think with Proenza, it's a little bit more exciting if you're getting the prints and the motifs that Proenza does season on season that people like to look at and people enjoy seeing. Next up, we have Blake Lively, who was attending Michael Kors and wore a I believe that this is a top and a pant. Uh, it's a flared pant in beige and a matching tank top style. Listen, it was so hot in New York. So anybody that you're seeing and that you're experiencing when it comes to New York Fashion Week when looking at these photos, it was ridiculously warm. And every single time I was seeing the celebrities out and about or seeing people in general out and about, I was like, oh my God, I can't imagine. I showed up in shorts and a t-shirt because my job is not to be photographed. My job is to look, talk shit and then go. And I felt bad for all of these people. I was like, oh, I am not sweating my ass off like you are. I think that this Blake Lively look is kind of smart. The tank top I think makes a lot of sense. It was hot as balls out that day. And I think that the sequins are very much so quintessential Michael Kors that we've been seeing. It's inspired by, I believe, Norman Norrell. And Michael Kors has been playing on that for at least like three or four maybe five years. I don't think it's a bad thing to play on. I think it captures the history of American sportswear. That's what, again, a Michael Kors branding sort of ethos is. I would say in the past four to five years, it's much more simple, quiet, luxury, and it's not trying to do, again, as I always say, the reference like under the sea, and I'm very happy about that, and I don't want us to go back to that era. Let's stay here. Let's stay in the moment. Let's stay present. I think that the flare pants are cool. I think that they fit Blake really, really well. I do think that considering this is probably a pair of separates, a tank top, and a pant that the belt actually kind of makes sense over it. Normally I'm not pro belts, you know what I mean? I am anti belt. But here I think that you're trying to cover up what is essentially the tucking in of the tank top into the pant. And so I understand using this as a way to not have to see whatever's going on in there. And also I think Blake Lively just sort of does that beautiful, cool, essential woman easiness to her. So I think the look also makes sense there. Next up we have Denai Guerrero wearing Jason Wu. And I actually kind of like this black leather moto jacket, which is not something that I normally say. Normally I say, oh, black leather moto jacket? 
Mm. And it's not that I think that you wearing a black leather motor jacket is bad. Wear whatever you want. I don't really care. But I think oftentimes they look very similar and they don't really express much except black leather motor jacket. Here, I think that this Jason Wu one is kind of good in the sense that the length is much longer than I think the normal style is. And it also seems to be, in my opinion, a hybrid between a black leather motor jacket that we normally see. And usually it has like the little belt at the bottom and it's cropped kind of right at the stomach. But here it seems like it's been sort of combined with a sports jacket or a blazer of some sort. And it gives it this length. It also gives it a sort of, I want to say hourglassy shape because at the bottom it does subtly flare out. And I think that that's kind of smart. I think that it adds an elegance to it. I think it adds a formality to it. Where normally I say H&M. There's an association there with we're still existing in 2013. And here I think this feels a little bit more advanced. It feels a little bit more thought through. It feels like a little bit more of an experimentation with that sort of traditional motorcycle jacket that we see often. And I like it. I think paired with the black sheer skirt, it's fine. It works. It's nice. I like the jacket. I'm sold on it. Next up we have Doja Cat wearing a Victoria's Secret, which like I wasn't going to talk about out because like Victoria's Secret, the dress isn't really amazing. But then Doja Cat posted on her Instagram story about the dress the day after the Victoria's Secret fashion show event during New York Fashion Week. And she said, it's crazy when you got a dress on and your whole vagina is out the whole night and the straps in the dress pull your tits all the way down to your knees and all you asked for was a slip dress, but I digress. She also then went on to say, when I tell you the panty was built into the dress, so when I put it on, the shoulder straps pulled the string up through my cervix and split me like a block of a sharp cheddar cheese. Did I really bring this up because I just wanted to read that? Yeah, but that's also kind of why I talked about it. It's really like not that great of a dress. And also considering it's Victoria's Secret and the whole rebrand of Victoria's Secret from supermodels and Victoria's Secret angels and trying to sort of make clothing for women of all shapes and sizes and being inclusive. So you'd think that maybe they'd also make clothes that somebody would feel comfortable in. So it's intriguing to me that there's an element of uncomfortability in the clothing, especially if it's custom made for a celebrity that's going to be one of the faces of brand and the fashion show relaunch. So seems not great for Victoria's Secret. Maybe don't cut people like blocks of sharp cheddar cheese. Next up we have Emma Roberts and she was outside of the Kate show. I believe that she's wearing full Kate. It's a black leather motor jacket concerning. Are we seeing a trend? Hope not. And a matching black leather moto skirt with a, you know, zipper slit up the front. There's also a sheer turtleneck knit style, which I kind of love it. It's very beautiful. It's very intricate looking. I'm kind of obsessed with this trellis motif with what looks to be some sort of like foliage design in the center of each of these little diamonds. It looks beautiful. That's my favorite part of the look. As for the rest of what's going on. It's a moto jacket, which is being worn on the shoulders, which again, I just want to say, it feels like we're entering an early 2010s fashion moment right now. And that's really concerning because like, first things first, we barely got over that. You know what I mean? Usually I feel like the trend cycle is every 20 years. Now it seems like it's every 10. I don't like that. Like I would like to forget. You know what I mean? At least give me like a minute to forget that that happened. I don't like that we're bringing the motorcycle trend back. It seems scary, especially in this iteration. At least that Jason Wu look was like an update. Love the top. Everything else can go. We then had Gigi Hadid wearing Ferragamo by Maximilian Davis at Victoria's Secret. I know that this isn't really a New York brand, but like I just love Maximilian Davis at Ferragamo. We'll get into that collection in the Milan video. Long story short, it is a draped sort of ruched style in this very bright yellow. It has an asymmetrical hem, an asymmetrical sleeve bust detail. I don't love that as much as I love everything going on below the bust area. It looks just a little odd to me up here in this region. I like the fact that it follows the body. I like the fact that the texture sort of creates a really intriguing element as it moves down. The color is great. It's just, I don't know, something here is a little bit lumpy and I'm not obsessed with that. Next up we have Halle Berry. I love this woman. I got to see her in real life. It was really, it was iconic. So she is wearing Michael Kors because she is a Michael Kors woman. So she's wearing this nice little black dress that is full of slits. There is a full sort of sleeve slit, which is very much so a Michael Kors thing, to be completely honest. I've actually seen quite a few dresses now that have sleeves that are quite long, but they're slit up to around the elbow area. And so it creates this intriguing cape-like moment for each of the wearer's arms. But then there's also a double slit up the front of the skirt 
skirt of the dress too. So it sort of brings this continuity of literature. It's a different kind of literature. It's literature. There's a knee length black boot and a, I believe sort of like snake skin embossed leather belt that sits around the waist. So it creates again, this sort of 1970s feeling, which Michael Kors has been sort of playing on for the past few seasons. Halle Berry looks Great, she's hot, she's cool, she's wonderful, she's amazing. And I also think the dress adds a little bit of intrigue and sexiness to a silhouette that normally I think feels a little bit more conservative, a little bit older, a little bit more refined. And I think this is a nice way of going about these two styles coming together. And again, I know people are gonna be like, Luke, you're just saying that because it's Michael Kors. But like, no, I genuinely do think that if a brand sticks to what a brand likes to do and a brand sticks to its ethos, that's fine, I get it. But I think that we should be trying to make it a little bit more exciting, a little bit cooler, trying to pull it in different ways season on season to make it feel a little bit different. And I think Michael Kors is doing that in these looks. Next up, we have Hari Neff wearing Helmet Lang. Now, this is from Peter Doe's first collection for Helmet Lang, and this actually, I believe, is a look that was either custom made for Hari or it's a not actually seen on the runway yet piece, so it was unveiled before the actual collection came out. I don't mind the bubble hem. I think that we are seeing the bubble hem come back. Listen, if you're gonna keep up with all these fashion month videos. It's happening. The bubble trend is here. I love a bubble hem. I love a bubble dress. I think they're fun. I think they're cool. And I do think that this black silk version with a little bit of texture, even a little bit of this wrinklingness that is purposeful. So purposeful wrinkling, which we saw, I think a few seasons ago at Prada. And now it seems to be moving its way into fashion as well. I think it's cool. I think it adds to the texture. I think it adds to the element and essence of the bubble hem. I like the big long strip that also flows out of it as well. And I like the fact that it's also worn with like a loafer. Because normally I think we see bubble hems and they're usually worn with a heel. But I think a loafer adds a little bit of a coolness and a casualness to it. Listen, I think the silhouette looks cool. I think the dress looks very well made. It looks like it fits her great. Next up we have Ice Spice who is wearing Dion Lee. Now Ice Spice has become a Dion Lee woman. It's very much so in her sort of fashion moment recently. I feel like we've been seeing a lot of it on her. I just wish that this look was a little bit more connected or a little bit more well-rounded. Here's the thing, it's a black bodice top and a high-waisted skirt in a beige sort of silk with a little bit of a netting that's sheer that exposes the thigh and the knee and the leg area. But I just feel like the look disconnected. I don't think that they look like they actually work together or are paired together. And I think the issue is I love a Dion Lee moment. I think it's a great brand. I think that they make really, really exciting things. I think it's one of the brands that pulls New York up in terms of coolness and chicness and suaveness. But here I think that this just feels a little bit whatever we had the sample rack and we gave to Ice Spice and I feel like out of everybody Ice Spice should be having a little bit more of a custom moment a little bit more of an exciting cool chic personage in terms of the Dion Lee brand I think that she really could and does and has made cool moments and this just feels a little bit last minute styling whatever was left. And I think that's the issue. There doesn't seem to be a sort of full, well-rounded, thought-through essence and aura for the look. And I think if we look at a lot of the previous looks that we've talked about, like there's an idea and there's a message and there's a feeling to it. And these feel very, again, just like two pieces thrown together. And I want better for Ice Spice and I want better for Dion Lee. And it makes me sad because like, I like this duo. I like that they work together. Next up we have India Moore wearing Carolina Herrera. This is a pretty simple standard Carolina look. It looks like this pink and red dress has a floral motif. I don't know, it feels very like taken off of a tapestry. Is it simple? Is it a little bit minimal? A little bit boring? Sure, it is. I agree. But at the same time, do we think that it fits the Carolina Herrera aesthetic? Sure, I do agree. I just wish that there was a little bit more pop, a little bit more excitement, a little bit more intrigue. Like I'm sure that this dress will sell super duper well. I'm sure somebody's gonna love it. I'm sure somebody's gonna buy it. And that makes sense also for Carolina Herrera. They do custom looks on occasion, but it's not super duper often. So I understand that this being more of like a commercial kind of feeling to the look, but I just wish that it was, I don't know, jazzed up. Next up we have Jennifer Lopez wearing Ralph Lauren. Now this was for the Ralph Lauren show. Now it's a sheer blouse. She has a lot of silver jewelry on her neck. There's a little bit of a billow in these sheer sleeves and it looks like she's wearing some sort of crop top underneath, sort of like a crop top bra situation. Then there's a big, big buckled belt, which I think that again, seems like it's becoming a trend, big buckles on belts. And this floral metallic flouncy skirt, 
I don't completely hate it. I think that there is an element of like a weird Western old lady tablecloth kind of feeling to it, at least in terms of the skirt. And then the blouse, I think, is cute. I think it's sheer. I think it, you know, is trying to be a little bit young and fun. But overall, pretty forgettable in the lexicon of looks. But I do think that it fits in with like a Ralph Lauren vibe. And I don't think that it differs or makes me feel like, oh, Ralph, why would you do that? I also feel like it fits in with JLo's kind of like hot and sexy look, but also a little bit more demure and toned down. There's also like a styling element to it. I mean, I think that the sheer blouse, the skirt, it's not just a dress. It feels like we're trying and then the big belt buckle. That collection was also inspired by a lot of Western influenced things, very much of double RL sort of moments going on in terms of Ralph as well. I don't completely hate it. I don't completely love it. I think that there's elements of it that I can appreciate and looking back at like the history of Ralph Lauren aesthetics, it makes sense. But do I think that it's something that, you know, to the everyday person, they should be like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so wonderful. Is it? No, I get that. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with it. Why I'm a little bit, you know, tangled and a little bit why I'm kind of like, ah, I get it, but I don't love it. I'm on the fence. Next up, we have Julia Fox wearing Viederhof, and I love this. Now we talked a lot about Viederhof in our New York Fashion Week review. So if you don't really have that context, you can go watch that video to get it. But Viederhof is first and foremost a brand currently, from my understanding, that very much so heavily relies on bridal as a way to build its business. So Julia Fox wearing essentially a white cocktail dress and a very big veil with a tulle frothy hem is kind of amazing. It's kind of wonderful. And also Julia, again, I think is smart. I was at the show. You could see Julia. You couldn't miss her. I mean, she was wearing that. And it was also like kind of dark in the show venue too. So like she was really like, you know, shining bright. But what she would do, and I don't think it's really captured here, is she would kind of like move her body in like circular sort of ways. She would like turn. And as she turned, the veil would also like swing with her. So it created kind of like a fluidity, a motion, almost like a spinning white top of weddingness and there was something fun about it there was something exciting about it i also can't really see what's going on underneath it does seem like there is a sort of white corset with beautiful boning some sort of white bows and then a tulle sort of underskirt underneath of that i love it i think it's chic i think it's elegant and at the same time i think julia fox is one for a little bit of performance art and so I think that this plays into her aesthetic. I think it plays into a very vital element of the Wiederhof brand. And at the same time, look, is it probably a wedding look? Absolutely. But do I feel like it takes itself out of being a wedding look because there's a campiness and a kitschiness and a movement and a play full element to it? Yeah, I do. And that kind of makes me like it even more. I don't know. I love this. I thought it was super fun. Next up, we have Julianne Moore wearing Ralph Lauren. It's a double-breasted blazer, a crystallized dress in gold, a stocking, a boot, and a bag. And I don't love it. I don't love it at all. I wish Julianne Moore had like a custom moment. I just think that this feels a little bit too playing it safe, boring, blah. I feel like we've seen a lot of Julianne Moore looks in the past maybe year or two that are like simple and demure and easy, but at the same time, like there's a designed element to them usually. And this just doesn't feel cool. It feels again, sort of like we're taking things off the rack and throwing them on and it's not gonna happen for me. How do I take the claps away? I'm trying to take them away. That's how I feel. Just feels like stuff thrown on. And that makes me sad because I want a moment for Julianne Moore. I like when Ralph Lauren does like a cool chic red carpet moment. And it just doesn't feel like that's, I will say, listen, I get it. It's hot and you know, it was sweaty and it was awful. But at the same time, like it's a double breasted blazer on top of a dress, so. How hot and sweaty were we? Next up, Katie Holmes. Listen, again, cool, commercial, easy, breezy, beautiful, cover girl, Ula Johnson. This makes sense. This is what I mean when I'm saying New York brands are usually very commercial and it it's fine. It is what it is. That's how it works. But I think with Ula Johnson, it's a brand that is a little bit more kind of like 70s inspired, a little bit more freezy, breezy, hippie woman, girl experience. And I think that Katie gets it. I think that Ula gets it in Katie or Ula gets it on Katie and it makes sense. I just like this deep maroon on her. I think it's really, really simple. I think it's really, really easy. But at the same time, like it makes sense for the brand. It makes sense for Katie. It fits the aesthetic and like, that's fine. That's all it really kind of needs to be. And I like that. You can do stuff that feels a little bit maybe off the rack but like that doesn't have to be a bad thing if you have the vibe down if you have the aesthetic and the style down sometimes we don't 
like the previous look and then moments where we do it's like that's fine let it let it breathe let her go let somebody wear real clothes it's fine it's cool it doesn't have to be a showpiece next up we have Lil Nas X who wore a look by coach it is a suede jacket and matching maxi skirt in white and you can actually see if we zoom in the different panels of the suede there's also a black turtleneck underneath and a little bit of a waist chain sort of belt would I like it as much probably not but I think that that with Lil Nas X, there's an element of intrigue, interest, there's that idea of like blurring the gender line and things like that. But also, I think it's a cute look. I think it fits in with the coach aesthetic, which is leather. A lot of what we saw on the runway was suede, so it makes sense that we're seeing it here as well. Again, the turtleneck may be a little bit too hot and sweaty for me during the September in New York. I do like the length of the skirt. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. I think it has sort of a minimal 90s flair to it. I think with the sunglasses and the boots, there's just that forward cyber feeling and vibe to the look. It's not radical. It's not ridiculous, but I think it's nice. I think it works. It feels a little bit less coached by Stuart Weber's looks. It feels a little bit more chilled out and minimal, and so I don't mind it. We then had Lucy Hale in Carolina Herrera. It is a short and jacket set, and she's wearing it with no shirt on underneath. It's made up of a pink, green, blue, orange plaid tweed, or at least what looks like a tweed. She's wearing a pink little Carolina Herrera bag and a pink shoe. Meh. I do think that for the weather makes sense. I get it. The shorts, the no shirt underneath, cool, fine, totally. Something about the tweed here in the plaid, it just feels a little bit Claire's Boutique, which maybe is just like the Lucy Hale sort of brand because I think for the most part, she's known to a younger audience. And so maybe that's what Carolina and her stylist are going for when it comes to styling her in this manner. But I just don't think it reads as interesting, exciting, chic, elegant. It kind of reads a little bit out of date to me. We then had Pamela Anderson at Proenza Schooler, and I believe that she is wearing a dress. It's a knit dress with a polo sort of top and then a pleated skirt on the bottom. So they kind of combine together to create, honestly, a rather simple, again, very minimal Proenza Schoolery sort of fit. But I don't think that it's bad. I think that the polo top is chic the knit to each their own and there's a sparkle element to this gray and then the pleated skirt again i don't think it's bad it just doesn't really excite me but i think that's also just new york to be honest for the most part it's just kind of there again not bad but is it really worth talking about no Next up, we have Quinta Brunson wearing Jason Wu. Now, this is a cocktail dress in white, I assume, with a black embroidery that's underneath the mesh, a little waist corset, and, like, here's my issue. The black mesh over the white dress with the black embroidery, fine. Totally get it. I just don't really understand why there is this oversized black band that wraps around her waist. I just don't think that it's necessary. And if it is necessary in order to sort of create an hourglass shape, put it underneath the dress. Like, the point of the mesh is that you get to see the beauty of the embroidery but like how can you see the beauty of the embroidery fully if there is a gigantic polyester looking band over her waist like it detracts from what you're supposed to be looking at so that's my big issue with this. I do think that the silhouette is great on Quinta. A lot of the time I'm usually kind of upset about what Quinta wears because I think that people aren't taking into account the fact that she is sort of shorter but here I think that this is a great example of proportions working for the person wearing it. I'm happy with proportions of the look, but I'm not necessarily happy with the composition. I know that she is saweeting her ass off in this Dion Lee jacket, but if you're gonna do fashion, and she 100% is the one that would have chosen to wear this look, no stylist is forcing clothing on a celebrity's body. I think this is cool. I love the full styling of the jacket right up onto her nose. I love the fact that we also get a deconstructed shearling jacket by Dion Lee. I love the deconstructed elements of Dion Lee's work. So when you get these little zippers that can deconstruct themselves and create a whole different aspect and styling to the piece, I'm happy with it. I also think that the shorts honestly make sense. I think it fits Saweetie's brand, but I also think that it is somewhat climate conscious in that regard, although the jacket obviously is not. The black boots, I don't know. I wish that we had done something in like a lighter sort of gray or beige. I don't know that the black really complements what's going on above it. The shorts and the jacket, I love. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. I think it fits the brand. And at the same time, it's somewhat, but not really at all, understanding of the weather at hand. 
And we have another Saweetie look because she wore this Laquan Smith dress. Listen, it is a full sequin dress with a low scoop lunging neckline and then a full circular cutout at the stomach. Now, listen, I think the red on her is striking. It's stunning. It's beautiful. She looks great. I love the cutout detail. I think it's very much a Laquan Smith and I also think it very much fits with Saweetie's brand. It's her aesthetic. It's what she goes for. I think the length of the skirt is actually pretty good. It just perfectly pools at the floor and I think that sometimes with sequins that can be a little bit difficult. The one issue that I really note is around the sort of waist area there seems to be a little crinkle wrinkle but it's not so bad and also I understand that the composition of this little cutout moment is going to create sort of fit issues in different places which I think is just part and parcel of that kind of garmentation. Same time I wish it was obviously like perfect but the color looks great on her, the dress looks great on her. I think that she's selling herself and Laquan Smith's brand super duper well. I think that they are very compatible so I'm happy with this. We then had Sophia Richie wearing Ralph Lauren. This was the moment. I think this is the moment. I love this look so much. This off the shoulder little pinstripe pant set is cute. It's fun, it's funky, it's somewhat, you know, seductive and young and cool and fresh with the off the shoulder element. I think the fact that the pinstripes keep that Ralph Lauren suiting and tailoring aesthetic that is very much so near and dear to the brand. Not obsessed with the little waist belt with the RL on it. I understand branding, I get it. I just, I don't love it. But I also think because you're looking at the shoulders, you're not necessarily looking at the waist element of it all the way. I also love the pant. I think it's super cool. I think it fits all together. The white pump really radiates off of it. The black bag, I think it's fine. It doesn't, you know, upset me. So I thought this was a hot girl moment. This is the Ralph Lauren young woman that I want to see. Next up, we have Tinashe wearing Dion Lee. Listen, again, like this is a Dion Lee look to me. This feels A, like it's a full composition. There's a full element of what we're going for. A moto jacket with a moto pant, very much so on brand for Dion Lee. At the same time, I love this little red knit top. Is it sheer? Absolutely. But at the same time, it covers the girls and then it falls down, creates a little flowy sort of string element. And it just sort of complements what's going on on the jacket and the pant. It's all all together, you know what I mean? Like it's not that difficult to have things that sort of work together in this manner. So let's keep this up. I think Tanashi looks great. Next up we have Venus Williams who I love and I feel like she's been having a fashion moment and she had that look. I think it was a Willy Chavaria look at the US Open and I love. But here she's wearing Prabal Garang and like, I just, I don't know, I'm not sold. The off the shoulder, listen, I like, I think it's fun. I think it's on trend, it's great. I just think that A, the embroidery or the crystallization, which is fine. If people wanna be into that, that's cool or whatever. It's just the garment. That black band that sits around the waist, I think is trying to like, bring you in and make you sort of look at the waist. But at the same time, there's nothing about this look that really like does anything to the waist. So you're drawing your eye to the waist, but there's nothing about the waist besides the fact that it's a waist that you're like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? So that's a big issue for me in that regard. I also think the length of the pant is really awkward. It's like semi capri length and it just looks weird I think with the shoe not sold on it I don't think this works I don't think it works I want it to work because I love Venus but I don't think it works and finally we have Zazie Beats I love this this is Caroline Herrera I think it's so cute I think it's so fun I think it's the perfect style of dress for this weather that we were enduring the green with the white polka dot is fun and it's fresh and it's cute and it's pop and the fact that you have the matching bag and the matching shoes is great. But on top of it, that hat. That hat was big. That hat was gigantic. It was fun. It was funky. It's something that you looked at and you were like, she looks like a beautiful mushroom. I would love to eat that beautiful mushroom. It just was nice and enjoyable and campy and kitschy and fun and happy and go lucky and all of the above. And I loved it. It was great. It was wonderful. It looks nice here, but it was even better in person. So that is the end of this New York Fashion Week Celebrity Fashion Roast and Review. Let's talk about a best and worst. Best I'm gonna give Anita in the Michael Kors, Sweetie and Laquan Smith, and I think Zazie Beats. Oh, and Sophia Richie and Ralph Lauren. I like those. Those were fun. Worst, Venus Williams, probably go wrong. Julianne Moore and Ralph Lauren. Ice Spice and Dion Lee. So please let me know what you guys thought of all of these New York Fashion Week looks. And if there are any looks you want me to talk about from London Fashion Week, let me know because I will get into it. So thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. And TTYL.